Hi, I'm Stefan and I want to talk about the BOSS RC500 loop station today. This is not a review of the unit, there are plenty of those. I want to tell you a couple of things that I found odd and that you may want to know about if you're thinking of getting one for yourself. Number one, the filing system, how to exchange data between the looper and your computer. And number two, the rather strange way of naming loops. But first up, the filing system. The RC500 comes bundled with an app called Boss Tone Studio that lets you import and export audio files. The problem with that is that sooner or later Boss will come up with a new looper and then that app and along with it your looper becomes unsupported. I want to know if I can just mount the looper on my desktop as a plain vanilla drive and drag and drop loops in and out of it. I tried it, I did run into a problem, but I found a solution. Let's take a look. So I have created a generic loop here in Logic Pro and I'm going to export this as an audio file. The specs say it must be a WAV file, it can be any bit depth and the sample rate has to be 44.1k. So let's go with that and call that test. I'm using a dummy plug to switch around the looper and of course we need a USB connection. And after a brief moment, the RC500 appears on the desktop. Here is the loop I just exported. Before I copy the file, let's see how the looper is organized. There is a data folder which probably contains resources or something. I don't know what these files do. You better just leave them alone. Now the WAV folder is where your audio files go. It contains one folder per memory slot. The RC500, of course, is a two-track looper, so that's two folders per memory slot for a total of 198. Each of these folders contains either nothing or exactly one WAV file. So I'm going to drop the test loop into the first slot. Make sure you never have more than one loop in each folder. Let's eject and try to play that back. The display color shows that the loop is ready to go, but hitting start results in the unsupported file error. The format is supposed to work, so the next step then would be to use the Boss Tone Studio app instead. Now the app mounts the looper for you, and I'm going to select the exact same WAV file that I dropped into memory number one before. There it is. And you can see it here in slot number one, but this time I'm selecting memory slot number two and import here. So let's see what happens. Well, now it works, but why? Supposedly, this is the exact same file, so let's dig a little deeper. I mounted the looper again. Here's the WAV file I imported with drag and drop. And here is the WAV file that was imported with the app. Let's open both of these with QuickTime Player and check the properties. As you might expect, this one says 16-bit, 44.1K. Now let's take a look at the other one. Now this one says 44.1K, but 32-bit float. So obviously the Tone Studio amp has converted the file, which means the list of supported formats is only half true because 16 bits is really only supported by the app, but not by the looper itself. Now before I give up, I want to convert the original file myself and drag that into the looper. For this, I'm using Audacity, which you're probably familiar with, but of course you could use any other editor as well. So let's open the file and next I'm going to export it as a WAV file and be sure to select the 32-bit float option. Next Audacity puts up this window where you can fill out meta tags, but the looper cannot interpret any of these, so your best bet is to just leave all those fields blank. Okay, we're done, so close that. Don't save, and here is the new copy. Now we need to mount the looper again. There it is. And I'm going to drag our new copy into some other location. How about number four? Eject. And let's give that a try.
so great you may have to manually convert your files but at least you won't be dependent on the Boss Tone Studio app. Now let's talk about the naming business. As you saw the test file we just used is called test but the display on the looper never said test it said memory 1 or memory 2. Now of course you can change the name on the looper itself but that is a very cumbersome process. You have to activate a character, dial in a new one, confirm that, scroll over to the next character, dial in a new one, confirm that and you have to keep doing that and by the time you change say 50 names for a live set you spend a lot of time just naming things. Eventually of course you will change your sets, you will swap out some loops, add some new ones. So now you have a new set but the RC500 still shows you the names of the old set. Now what's up with that? Well think of this as a street with buildings. So you have building number one, building number two, you have 99 buildings in fact those are the memory locations. Now the Millers live in building number one, the Johnsons live in building number two, those would be your audio files, your loops. Now of course you can change the label on a building, you take off number two and put a sticker that says Johnson, but if Johnson moves out and Butler moves in, the building still says Johnson because you haven't changed it, right? And that is how the RC500 works. You never change the name of a loop directly, all you're changing is the label of a memory location which is not in any way connected to the underlying audio file and that is very silly. It also means that if you drag out the file to your computer for backup it will have a default name. Now I wish I could tell you a great workaround but unfortunately there's nothing you can do about this. If you have an idea how to at least improve this workflow please put it in the comments. I still hope that you found this video useful and I thank you for watching.